And we will have to wait to see what further action the Ford government will take. They'll be debating this weekend what to do to curb the insidious spread of COVID-19. We're going to have an emergency meeting over the, the weekend and we'll make a, a decision on Monday. We'll be announcing Monday at, at one o'clock moving forward. Premier Ford held an emergency meeting with CEOs of hospital this afternoon to assess the COVID situation. The head of ICU at Michael Guerin Hospital can say firsthand what is happening. We're trending above the worst case scenario right now, which has us at over 500 patients in ICUs with COVID-19 by January 8th. And uh, if the current trend continues, that could be where we end up, which would uh, render the healthcare system likely unsustainable. A government source says Monday's announcement will have restrictions that go beyond the existing framework, but by region only. The focus is on southern Ontario, where the spread is greatest. Yesterday, the Premier said all options were being considered. Everything's on the table. That could mean the government is considering extending the school break or even do a Quebec-style lockdown after Christmas, where many people won't go to work for two weeks. We're holding back this tidal wave, and unfortunately, time is on COVID's side. Epidemiologist Colin Furness says he would have liked to have seen more proactive testing in high-risk areas. But now, stronger action needs to be taken. Lockdowns represent a failure. So to answer the question, to say, yes, we need lockdowns. The premier has dismissed the idea of a curfew. Furness is suggesting a modified version. This would not be popular. But I think we could try closing roads at night. That would have no economic impact to speak of. What it would do is it would make it more uncomfortable, more difficult, more awkward for people to go visiting. Stopping people from visiting friends and family is the key, officials say, as the holidays near. This doctor's message just might make them think twice. I see people dying of COVID-19 in my ICU. In fact, this past week we lost five patients in four days. This is a disease to fear. This is something that I do not want to get, and it can affect people of any age. We have people younger than me in my ICU right now battling this disease and fighting for their life. The patients are dying alone, uh, sometimes with their family member present virtually by Zoom and uh, with the healthcare team, primarily our registered nurses, you know, with them while they take their last breath. The human element has been removed. We don't get to know the patients through the eyes of their family members because their family members aren't there. It's a dehumanizing experience for the patients, but also for the healthcare workers who are caring for them because that human connection with the patient is more difficult to create. And when they die, that sense of loss can be more severe because you, you feel like you never knew them uh, as well as you wanted to. The province announced today it is setting up 17 additional vaccine centres at hospitals across the province. They'll be used to administer the 90,000 new doses of Pfizer that are expected before the end of the year. It is good news, but it will still be months before enough people will be vaccinated to make a tangible